If you watch my recent video, you know that being afraid of flying is completely irrational. There's no question about it. Or is there? Not because of accidents or terrorism, but rather because of supernovae and quasars billions of light years away. Here's a concern. Flying high in the air exposes you to increased levels of cosmic radiation, which can lead to cancer. So is this something you should actually worry about? Well, first of all, it's important to note that radiation is everywhere and isn't necessarily harmful. Radio waves and light are electromagnetic radiation, but don't cause cancer. What most people think of as radiation is actually ionizing radiation. This is radiation that carries enough energy to break away electrons from atoms and molecules, therefore ionizing them. Being exposed to ionizing radiation can mutate DNA, which can lead to cancer. Now don't get alarmed that any exposure to ionizing radiation will lead to cancer. In fact, people literally get trillions of new mutations every day and not everybody has cancer. Thankfully, most DNA is useless and your body has many layers of defenses against bad mutations. Still, there is a tiny, tiny chance that each exposure to ionizing radiation will cause cancer. There's no fine line between a safe and dangerous dose. It's all about probabilities. Thankfully, the probabilities are very small because even on the ground you're being bombarded with ionizing radiation from several sources at all times. Radon gas is a major source of ionizing radiation. It comes from the ground and can accumulate in basements. It usually accounts for over half of people's yearly exposure to ionizing radiation, and 1 in 15 houses have too much radon. Radon gas is the second leading cause of lung cancer, and because it is a colorless and odorless gas, the only way to know if your house is safe is to get it tested. Medical equipment is also a major source of radiation in the modern world, and may be as much as six times higher than it was in the 80s, even though on average a majority of people's yearly ionizing radiation exposure is still from natural sources. Most of this increase is due to CT scans. One study found that about 15,000 people die from them each year. For reference, about 35,000 people die each year in car accidents. One CT scan theoretically has a 1 in 1,000 to 1 in 10,000 chance of causing fatal cancer, which is similar to a 1 in 10,000 chance of dying in a car accident in the next year. It's important to note, though, that you could get cancer in 20 years from radiation, and if you die in a car accident, well, you're dead now. And whatever medical condition you're getting diagnosed is usually more urgent than a tiny chance of getting cancer in the future. Clearly, CT scans have also saved a lot of lives, probably more than they have taken, but it's important to note that they're not without risk and need to be used responsibly. Mammograms and other x-rays also use ionizing radiation, but much less than CT scans, and studies have found no significant increase in cancer risk when administered properly. Finally, MRIs use magnets, not ionizing radiation, and shouldn't increase cancer risk. Another huge source of ionizing radiation is cigarette smoke. Smokers' lungs receive a radiation dose that is well over the limit for radiation workers and dwarfs all other likely sources of ionizing radiation. Some UV radiation from the sun is ionizing, and as I'm sure you know can cause skin cancer. The final source of common radiation that we're concerned about for this video is cosmic radiation. Cosmic radiation most likely originates from many sources such as the sun, but mainly supernovae and active galactic nuclei, which are understood to be supermassive black holes with accretion disks at the center of distant galaxies millions or even billions of light years away. One blazar, an active galactic nucleus with a jet of ionized matter pointed towards the Earth, is 5.7 billion light years away and was the first known source of high energy neutrinos. Once cosmic rays hit the upper atmosphere, they produce showers of secondary particles. Cosmic rays account for only about 8% of our annual exposure to ionizing radiation because thankfully most of them are deflected by the Earth's magnetic field or blocked by the atmosphere. However, some radiation does still make it to the ground. Cancer rates have fluctuated with changes in background radiation levels. Let's recap what we have so far. You're always getting hit with ionizing radiation that has a tiny chance of giving you cancer, and you get hit with slightly more in an airplane because there's less atmosphere above you to block secondary cosmic rays. So does this actually lead to a noticeable increase in cancer? Well, one way to find out is by studying flight crews. Unfortunately, some studies have found that flight crews have higher rates of some types of cancer, such as skin or breast cancer. However, correlation does not equal causation. 
Flight crews often have messed up sleep schedules, lay in the sun during layovers, eat a lot of unhealthy airport food, and may find traditional relationships difficult. Additionally, smoking wasn't completely banned on flights until 2000, and was a common sight throughout the 80s. As mentioned earlier, cigarette smoke makes all other sources of common radiation seem insignificant. On the flip side, other studies have found no significant increase in cancer rates even after a career in aviation. And these are studies that are looking at flight crews who practically live on an airplane. If you fly once per year or even once per week, the risk is substantially smaller. Since the experimental evidence is not consistent, what about theoretical risk? Theoretically, you have a 1 in 3.7 billion chance of getting cancer per mile of flying. This means that on a 7 hour transatlantic flight, you have about a 1 in 1 million chance of getting cancer, probably later in life when you die soon anyway. You would have to fly 50 transatlantic flights just to get the same radiation dose as one mammogram, which is already an incredibly negligible risk. Compare that with a 1 in 86 million chance of dying per mile driven. A flight is the same radiation dose as merely existing for a few days on Earth. This means that in the US where people fly over a trillion miles per year, only about 270 of them will theoretically die from aviation related cancer. That is an incredibly unlikely way to die. Remember that 35,000 people die each year in car accidents. Even if flight miles were scaled to be equal to road miles, still less than a thousand people would die each year. Even this guy, with 18 million frequent flyer miles who spent 3.7 years of his life flying, has received significantly more radiation on the ground than in the air. Anyway, if you still want to be paranoid, you can check the space weather and make sure not to fly during any periods of increased solar activity. Additionally, flights over the poles have greater radiation exposure due to the nature of Earth's magnetic field. While this certainly is not something you should worry about if you fly domestically, even weekly, I probably would avoid flying over the North Pole during a solar flare. If you're an astronaut, however, there is a bit more to worry about. Astronauts receive the biggest radiation dose of any occupation by far. Okay, almost any occupation. NASA doesn't allow astronauts in orbit for more than a year to ensure that they have less than a 3% increase in cancer risk. The real problem is going to Mars. A crew going to Mars would receive the same amount of radiation from a CT scan, which is equal to about three years of ground background radiation every five to six days. And once they get there, they would be missing the protection provided by Earth's atmosphere and magnetic field. While not everybody going to Mars would get cancer, it would certainly be enough to make a meaningful difference in Mars colony cancer rates. Back on Earth, the odds of dying from cancer not from radiation are about 1 in 5 with major risk factors you should actually worry about being poor diet, lack of exercise, pollution, and smoking. The increased cancer risk due to flying is astronomically low and well under the threshold for statistical significance, which means it's basically indistinguishable from randomness. And it's not like flying exposes you to anything special. Taking a flight is basically like existing for a few days on the ground. Given the chaotic nature of cosmic rays, in reality flying has given some people cancer, but it has also saved people who would have met their demise from radiation on the ground. It's just that flying has killed slightly more people than it has saved. While still exceedingly improbable, more people do probably die from cosmic rays and plane crashes. In other words, a 5 billion year old high energy particle that originated from a distant supermassive black hole's accretion disk and traveled for an eternity through intergalactic space until smashing into Earth's upper atmosphere and causing a shower of secondary particles that mutated your DNA is more likely to kill you than an actual plane crash. And if that doesn't say something about how safe flying is, I don't know what does. Thank you for watching.